Hey everybody, welcome back for this week's watercolor lesson. This week we're going to paint these two red tulips. I based my painting on this reference photo. I got it off the website called Unsplash. It's a copyright free image uh, website. I encourage you to go there. I will provide a link. Uh, as you can see, here is the simplified composition. I did this uh, line drawing of the uh, of the reference image, but I simplified it significantly. I wanted to keep this painting a little simpler. I'm also recommending that you paint uh, a little smaller. We're going to paint this on a six by nine piece of watercolor paper. If you already have it transferred to a larger uh, piece of paper, that's fine. But uh, one thing about learning to, to paint in watercolor, it's better to work small. Larger is harder. And so a lot of times I will do a lot of my paintings uh, on a smaller, a smaller format and uh, it's easier to learn that way. Okay, let's get started. The first thing I want to do is go over the colors that I'm going to use in this painting. I have a pretty simple color palette. Again, I try to limit the colors I use in my paintings down to just three, four, maybe five at the most. In this particular one, we start out with alizarin crimson. It is a cool red so it moves towards the blue end of the spectrum a little bit as far as a red goes then i have uh, just azo yellow which is just a real basic yellow so you would want to have something like that on your palette next i uh, have a blue this is thalo blue and it's a, just a beautiful bright blue i don't use a lot of it in the painting uh, in some places i mix it with the green to darken the green uh, next, of course, there's a lot of green in the painting, so I am using a sap green, and you can see that here. And, you know, you can, of course, mix your own green with blue and yellow, but a lot of times it's easier sometimes just to use a good green on your palette, so sap green is a good choice. Lastly, I do have a, th a second red, and this is pyrrole red, which is more of a, of a warm red. It's got a little more orangey tones to it. Um, you can see the difference between the two reds there. I use that a little bit in the rose, uh, sorry, in the tulip, but not a lot. So you might see me use that a little bit. So the primary colors I use are the four at the top. Permanent alizarin crimson, crimson, azo yellow, thalo blue, and sap green. Okay, as I get started here, I'm going to get some clear water on my brush. This is a number 14 round, fairly large brush, a lot of fresh water on it. And I'm just going to work starting in the upper left corner area. Uh, I just put water up in that area. I didn't want to work in too big of an area at once. That's another thing that can be difficult. If you get too big of an area you're trying to work in, it can be difficult. So I just, uh, maybe an area the size of my hand, got that all wet. Um, also here, I'm realizing the board is a little bit too inclined, uh, too, too steep of an incline, so I, I adjusted that. Now, I really want this background area to be really light, uh, to not be too overpowering. So with water on the brush, I'm dragging now this pool of water that has some yellow pigment in it. I mixed up, again, that, that azo yellow and place it in there. Then go back and grab a really light, light wash of green, my sap green, and just begin to pull down from uh, where the yellow is and just start to see those mixed together a little bit. I'm painting around the stem of the flower there, wanting to keep, retain the white there. Again, really wet brush going back and just pulling some of these colors uh, away from where I already have water, um, letting it just flow. And again, a lot of times I'll start more from the top and work down just because that's the way I have a slight incline on the board, so it's going to want to go that direction just with gravity. Um, repeating, just um, bring the yellow and the green mixing around and just creating that background. As you can see, I have my uh, tablet here with the reference picture there in the upper right corner. And uh, again, it's, it's quite a, di it's the, the picture, the reference is quite a bit different. Um, 
as far as the composition, I simplified it, but I am trying to go for those, those yellows in the upper left corner that fade down into a green. I decided I did not want the dark, the background to be as dark, however, as what I um, saw in the reference. All right, I went ahead and grabbed a darker uh, mix of green now, and I'm just, uh, I did the stems, and I'm, I'm gonna again just add some, a little bit of darker foliage in the back as well. I'm working with a lot of water on my brush. At this point, I'm looking for a really soft background. The way you achieve that is to be putting, uh, working wet on wet, uh, a very wet brush on wet background or on wet paper. Um, again, wanting to soften up that leaf right there that I was just working on. So I just took my brush, it was really quite wet, and just touched it up against the paint, which just causes the paint to, to flow towards the water and the brush. And I'm going around the top and just, again, wanting to accentuate the edge of the tulip um, with some interesting color. So the yellow and the green, I want to bring that right up against the flower all the way around. Okay, now I mix up some of my alizarin crimson, some of the red. I want a real light wash of it. This is wet on dry now because I have not painted, uh, put any water in this uh, area of the tulip. And uh, just start taking my large number 14 round and just lay down that color, trying to follow what I would perceive to be kind of the direction of some of the texture in the flower. And um, in a couple places, I touch up against the green and yellow background, and when, it, when that happens, then that red starts to flow a little bit into those areas, and I'm, I'm not opposed to that. I kind of like how that goes, but I don't want it to happen too much. So I'm being careful to not really touch that background color too much. And then go ahead now and do the other tulip. Okay, this is our first wash, initial wash, and it looks good. However, as I look at those uh, tulip areas, I feel like I, I want to soften it a little bit. So one of the tricks I like to use quite often is use a spray bottle. You see a small picture here in the upper right corner. Um, just a simple little spritzer. And I like often to come back and, uh, especially if I want a real soft effect, I'll just spray a little of that water in that area and it really creates a beautiful effect. Okay, the paper is still a little damp there in the tulips um, and I want to take advantage of that to bring in a little darker value. Here I'm using some of the uh, other red, the pyrrole red, <clears throat> and just touching into some areas that I want to emphasize that uh, kind of a bright red color. Some of the veins also that I see in the flower. Um, I'm not really looking for fine detail yet, however, <clears throat> because again, the paper is still a little damp. And so as I lay down these colors, they're going to spread and diffuse into the wet paper. And I want that soft edge at this point. I'm still basically just putting down general colors uh, that later are going to be visible through the other transparent layers that I lay down later. I just continue with this process. I'm looking to darken or deepen the values that I see. If you look at the rose or the tulip on the right, 
Uh, it's really a, a quite a dark, dark, dark red. And I haven't nearly gotten it that dark yet. <clears throat> um, but I don't want to go there all at once. So I'm just doing this, going to do this layer by layer and just start adding in some of the texture that I see in the flower. I'm going over to the other flower. I've done a little bit there as well. I'm kind of going back and forth between the two flowers. I've also mixed up, uh, I've, I've combined the yellow with the pyrrole red to get kind of an orangey color because if I look at that, especially the tulip on the right, it, there's a, especially in the outer edges of the tulip, there's kind of a, almost a orangey glow. So I'm trying to capture that, mixing the yellow in. Moving over to the other flower now, I see a real dark value along the bottom edge of the tulip. So I'm starting there and putting down some darker value. I see some right down the middle of the tulip as well. There is a darker value. I've let the paper dry a little bit here now, and now I'm coming back with a mixture of my sap green with a little bit of yellow in it, and I'm emphasizing the stem of the right tulip. I put down one wash down the entire length of the stem, and then I come back and darken the tone a little bit more, and put down an even darker along the right-hand edge, which I think is away from the source of light. I'm actually mixing in a little phthalo blue as well to darken. Now I'm softening the left-hand edge of that stem. Kind of keep going back and forth, adding in a bit more. Now I've gotten a lot darker value there on the tip of the brush, and I'm just dotting it in, especially near the bottom, uh, right below the flower, where the stem is the darkest. Now I just keep on uh, mixing up darker and darker um, mixes of green. Again, to get it dark, I'm mixing in some of the phthalo blue a little bit. And I'm, I'm just going back and forth between the two stems, um, darkening. Uh, again, originally I had put down a really light wash there in the first wash, but now I'm really wanting to emphasize that. I even took just a little bit of the yellow mixture and dabbed it in to the green of the stem. I also have a few leaves that are overlapping the stem in a couple places, and so I'm doing what you might say is a little bit of negative painting around those leaves uh, to emphasize their shape. I just kind of keep working this for a little bit. I'm even taking some of the green up into the flower here, the base of the flower. Because again, colors often reflect, so that green will reflect into the bottom of the tulip. Then I take some water on my brush, and now I'm just softening that greenish color and letting it fade into the pink of the tulip. Now I just want to emphasize the shape of some of these, this foliage. Keeping uh, the darker tones to the right um, as I am having the light source appear from, from the left, upper left corner. I decided to put in a little bit more of a leaf here. I'm not exactly following the reference picture exactly. I'm just and this, is, this happens a lot in watercolor. When you lay down water, especially in your first wash, sometimes you get some patterns that emerge in the paint because watercolor has a mind of its own. And so sometimes water flows where you didn't expect it to. And so as you paint, you might look at that and go, gosh, that looks like a leaf. And so I think I'll turn it into a leaf. And so then you just change your composition. You know, you don't have to stick with what you originally uh, had drawn in. Um, and because a lot of times if you uh, 
you'll actually find some beautiful mistakes happening. You might call them mistakes, but um, but you can turn them into just a really beautiful part of the painting if you work with the watercolor instead of against it. So again, I'm decided I've got another leaf over on the on the right, and I laid down some green wash first. Now I'm coming back in with a little yellow on top of that, and I just kind of keep working these areas, um, getting this effect of the the tulip foliage. Now, as I study the flower on the right, I see there's a very dark value in especially the middle center of the of the tulip. It's almost a black color. Uh, it's very dark. And so what I do is I pick up um, some thalo blue, mix it up very light though, as a very light wash, and just start to glaze, is really what it's called, glazing over uh, with this bluish color over the values I already have. And my paper is dry at this point. And so this blue is not going to spread into the other colors. It's being laid down as a transparent wash or transparent glaze over the other colors that are already there. And this is really the beauty of watercolor is when you can get transparent colors over other transparent colors and you can then start to see the interplay of all the colors one on top of the other as you add them slowly. Now I take a darker mix of the alizarin crimson, the um, darker bluish red, and I, now this is wet on wet because I've already put down this blue uh, wash, very light, and so now I can take this purpley red, this darker red, and um, begin to just touch into those areas and that just will spread into the uh, wash of light blue that's already there and it'll just spread out and so I'm doing it along the top because I wanted to find the edge uh, at the top and then I'm also now going down the bottom I've even mixed up an even darker uh, combination of phthalo blue and alizarin crimson and um, that's got a real burgundy, um, almost purpley color to it. And I just kind of keep going back and forth between different colors uh, because when I look at the flower, there is a real interplay of lots of different colors there. I've wetted the brush now and I'm going back and softening that edge. I've again mixed up a little bit of that yellow with the red to create a little bit more of an orangey color and I'm going in now into these areas that I see uh, are just a different color, a little more orangey red. Mixing yellow with that red to get that orange. And I just continued the process all the way around uh, the flower. This is a process that can take a while. I'm also studying carefully the reference image there um, because there are areas where different petals overlap and where they overlap there's a darker value. Uh, and so I'm trying to faithfully represent that because it's kind of an important part of the way the flower looks. Every time I put down darker color, I come back with a, a little bit of fresh water on the brush just to soften the edge. Now I've moved over to the left hand tulip and same thing, taking a light wash of the alizarin crimson, 
I do a light wash over most of the flower, at least the center part of it. it kind of a solid wash, um, transparent, not too dark. And then I come back and pick up darker values, deeper tones of the same color, and just touch into the areas that are darker along the bottom edge and the top edge of the of the petal and also doing some of this on the uh, the right and left edges of that tulip okay now I've let the painting dry again um, and I'm mixing up some kind of again a little bit more of that purpley color it's a combination of thalo blue and alizarin crimson and again just wanting to emphasize especially that middle petal of the right tulip um, I laid down again a little bit of that darker purpley color now I'm coming back and along the edge there really um, taking that alizarin crimson and, and really just painting that in there and then softening the edge. Again, working along the top part of the flower now, I've taken some more red and uh, you can see I'm working with a smaller brush now. This is an eight round uh, where I'm trying to have a, a little bit more detail. And I just continue that process right around the whole flower. Lay down a little bit of a wash of some color, then come back in and drop in darker values of it where I see that in the reference photo. Maybe put clear water on my brush, soften the edge, grab a little bit darker color like I'm doing here, and uh, blend that darker in and just wet on wet let it flow into the other color Now I move over to the left hand flower and with pretty strong uh, value in the brush, quite a bit of paint, I go ahead and just lay down um, some of that color, that red there uh, in the front petal. That I, I'm actually painting this left flower quite a bit darker than what it actually is in the reference. In the reference picture, it's more pink, but I decided I wanted to keep both flowers a similar color value. So I'm I'm pretty much painting the left hand flower the same value, same color as the right hand one. Uh, I often I use a reference photo just to get me started a lot of times and uh, especially with flowers um, and then I take a lot of creative license and just kind of do whatever I feel like doing. Okay now I've mixed up again a really dark mixture of the red and the phthalo blue almost a black color and I am coming in and really trying to define the edge of that front petal by darkening the petal behind it along the edge there um, because as you see in the reference picture there's there's a real dark edge there I'm taking some more color and just dabbing or, or 
placing that down at the bottom part. Sometimes you see I actually get my finger in there and try to pick up some paint that I accidentally got in the wrong place. Then I take my brush that is clear with just clear water and I soften the edge and I come back and get the dark color. I'm doing that now and then I drop that in there and let that flow. Again, that's wet on wet. So um, I put down some more color and then soften that edge with a with water. Now I'm even lifting some color and that's one thing I haven't talked a lot about. You can uh, get all the water out of your brush, uh, a dryish brush, and then just lift the color out. You'll, you'll lighten that area then by removing color. I'm dropping in the dark purpley color then again at the bottom and now I'm just taking that same color, it's a purpley color, blue and red, and I'm bringing it down into the stem. Again, you might not think, you think the stem's green. Well, actually, if you look at the reference picture, the, the stem is, is almost black. And um, so I, again, but I didn't go there initially. I didn't go straight to the black color. I put down my first glaze of green and then later on another glaze of darker green with some blue in it. And now I'm going back the third time with the stem and I'm coming back with almost a purpley color. And that's what I'm talking about, about multiple layers of color glazing one on top of the other and you're letting the painting dry in between and um, that just is what creates that translucent uh, I guess look that watercolors have um, is when you get all these different layers of colors one on top of the other and you can see through to the color below it. That's why I like watercolor um, more than other types of paint, like acrylic, especially that it's so opaque that you, once you put the color down, you can't see anything behind it. Um, but watercolor lets you see through. And so you have to be patient. You have to work slowly in different layers um, and with really transparent washes. And a mistake a lot of people make in the beginning, especially, is just not letting things dry in between these different washes. Again, with that same purpley wash, I've moved over to the uh, other flower repeating some of the same techniques. I keep wanting to come back with uh, this blue and red mixture and darkening this petal in the front again because in the reference picture I see a really dark value there. Trying to emphasize the edge of that petal as well by giving, doing some uh, negative painting, painting the shape around the petal as I see it um, cutting into that petal in the back there. Repeating the same steps on the left flower as well. Now I pick up more of that purpley color that I've been painting with and I decide to go back to the stem a little bit and even darken it up a bit more. Again, an important principle uh, of composition is that the eye is drawn to the places of highest contrast. Um, so where you see real dark colors up against real light colors, um, that's where your eye is going to be drawn. Also, I, tr I seek to include in all my paintings a full tonal range from dark darks to light lights. I think it just makes it more interesting. A lot of beginning painters, if you look at their paintings, they're all the same value. They're either all a real light value or maybe all real dark, usually all real light um, because most people are afraid to go dark. Um, but it makes the picture look real bland because there's no variation in value, value being the relative light and darkness of the tones 
in the color, in the painting. So you need to have real dark areas and real light areas. Okay, as I did before, I grabbed my little spritzer bottle, spray bottle, and decided to just spray uh, across the whole areas of the flowers, the red areas of the flowers, and, um, and just softening up. And when you do that, it's a little hard to see, but when you do that, those colors, uh, and again, I only spray on the reddish colors of the tulips, they just, those red starts to flow out into the rest of the picture, creating a real diffuse, fuzzy edge almost to the edge of the flowers. Um, and I really like that look. Uh, I don't write, like a lot of hard edges everywhere. And so the spray bottle, I, I do use it quite a bit to, um, at certain points in the painting, to, to soften up the whole painting. Now I even take my brush, which has just got water on it, and then go and just even uh, soften some of those edges a bit more. Go back to a mixture of green now and phthalo blue, and add an even darker tone, once again, to the stem. I'm really focused on where the stem connects to the flower. Um, there's a real dark, dark tone there. Now that I sprayed the uh, flowers too, they're quite wet. And so when I start taking these dark colors and um, I'm just being really careful where I just dab or touch with the brush and then that color just flows out from where I touched it. So I kind of go back and forth between the darker colors and grabbing some more red and putting that in there. Trying to retain some of the white, whitish areas in that left tulip. Um, okay, once again, I mix up some of that purpley color and go into the darkening even once again, the stem. I do this a lot through this process. I just, I just like the really strong contrast between the dark stem and the white, whitish, lightish background behind it. Okay, now I'm mixing up uh, some of the yellow. And I'm actually taking that and just lightly brushing up against the a couple along the edge of the tulip and going kind of from the background into the into the tulip itself again trying to soften wanting to add I added a, a little bit of green into the brush now and I'm going in and just adding some more foliage in the background I mix up a nice strong red, mix in some of the blue and I want to emphasize the edges. Um, again, up to this point, uh, lots of glazing, lots of soft edges, lots of blending color into the other, but I felt like at this point that I needed to define some of the edges of the petals because again, a tulip the way they each petal overlaps the other petal. I wanted there to be s some stronger contrast along the very edge. So mix up this dark red and kind of going along some of the edges. I don't want to just create a pure um, outline like a like a solid line, um, but I do want to emphasize those edges a little bit. Being able to define edges is extremely important. Gives your objects shape and defines your objects. We all define edges.
I now go back to the uh, right tulip and again mixing in some darker colors and again defining the edges on that flower as well. You can see here though I did always retain the very bit of white right along the very top of that petal. Uh, I feel like it it's, represents like the light shining off the very top edge of the petal there, uh, reflecting some light. And it also just helps to define the shape of that petal. Want to put some darkness down inside the petal, inside the tulip as well, thinking that uh, you know there's not going to be as much light down inside there, and so it'd be a little darker. I'm using some of my own artistic license at this point. Not exactly using the reference image. I mix up some more green here and just want to do a little bit more work on the leaves, defining them a little bit better. Trying to separate them from their background, a little bit sharper edge. Doing the same with the leaf on the right. Kind of doing a mixture back and forth between the green, sap green and the yellow. Okay, as I look at it, I'm still not satisfied that there's enough of a contrast between the petal there in the front and the center or core of the tulip, so I decided to grab some more dark and emphasize that dark in there. And I also see, uh, again, on that front petal, there's actually some real, almost a dark spot or dark um, area there on in the center top of that petal. So I go ahead and drop some color in there. Now it looks a little too too dark or too um, much of a contrast at this point. So I'm going to take some more of my dark and then just pull down and, and add. Again, if you look at that flower in the reference picture, it is, it is really uh, quite dark um, in the that front pedal. I'm trying to emphasize that. I'm just putting some finishing touches on the petals and just playing around with it a little bit. At this point, I start to work a little bit more in the background. I just want to, uh, I want to 
put in just a variety of different colors in the background, a little bit of blue, a little bit of red, just very, very subtle. These are very light washes. I take a little bit of a reddish blue mixture and I actually do a little negative painting around that one leaf on the right there at the bottom. And that seems to make that leaf kind of pop. Now I mix up some more blue. This is a more of a pure blue now. And I thought, you know, I, I feel like I want to have a little bit more blue in the picture. It's not really much blue, pure blue. It's all, uh, you know, red and green, a little bit yellow in the background. So again, I like to uh, include all three primary colors if I can. Um, now um, I've taken a little bit of that blue and just um, I'm, I'm wetting actually along the edge, that right hand edge of that flower and then I'm just now that the paper's wet there I'm just dropping in some of this blue it's a, a little bit of greenish blue um, but it's more blue than anything else I've got going on in the picture at this point and I think it just kind of adds uh, a little bit of kind of a neat effect again I'm not really getting this from the reference picture as much as I'm just thinking oh, it would be nice to have a little bit of blue in here. I'm working again with a pretty small brush, number eight, and I'm thinking about going back and, and adding what looks like some more leaves, um, shapes in the background, but I want to do it very subtly. Again, the further things are away from you in the picture the less defined they are it's called aerial perspective but the idea that there's um, kind of a mistiness quality to the air that causes the um, objects to appear more diffused soft edged um, a lot of times more blue in color um, and so I want to give that effect that there's more going on in the background with other flowers and other leaves, but I don't want it to be super well defined. I think I'm bringing a little bit of my blue over and doing the same thing over on this side of the picture as well. I've mixed up some green and now I'm, I've just laid that uh, along that left hand side of that one flower, again to emphasize that back edge. I decided to continue with this uh, application of a little bit of blue in the background. Again, these are very, very light washes. I'm mixing up a variety of colors, a little bit of the blue and the yellow and the green, and just putting down some of that color right along the edge of the flower. Then come in with a lot of water on the brush and just um, soften, soften the edge. Again, trying to look and see where the colors are laying, what, what looks like a leaf maybe is kind of e emerging there. And so I just, again, using my imagination and knowing a little bit about what a tulip leaf looks like, I just try to create that leaf shape where there wasn't a leaf before, but all of a sudden, whew, a leaf appears. I want to go back now and add a little bit more emphasis, a little darker value to the edge of that leaf there on the right. Hopefully you're getting the sense by now that um, I work with real light washes and I just kind of keep going back over and over again to different areas and just darkening the values or, or adding a different color as a glaze over a previous color. But I'm always, I'm always working with real thin washes, not adding too much color at once. And um, allowing it to dry in between so that these uh, colors just build up slowly.
mixing up more of the phthalo blue and uh, real lightly coming in and just emphasizing more edges, get water on the brush and soften the edge. I'm starting to get close to the ed end here of this painting. I'm getting close. And now I'm just kind of looking for little areas where I can uh, maybe uh, emphasize a shape, put in a shadow maybe, emphasize an edge a bit more, these types of things. One thing too, you're just kind of working all around the image. You work on an area and then you move away and let that kind of dry as you move into some other areas. Now I decide to go and uh, mix up, um, I kind of want to do some more in the background and what I really need is a, just a good neutral color. Whenever you mix pretty much all three primary colors, yellow and red and blue all together, you get kind of a, well, kind of a muddy, kind of a, a very neutral color. And uh, while you might think that does is not appealing, actually, um, sometimes, especially in the backgrounds and all, just having a real neutral color can be uh, a real effective way to kind of represent uh, maybe the background, that kind of thing. So again, when you mix all three primary colors together, red, green, and blue, you end up with a neutral color, kind of a grayish, a gray or a brown color. And I put a little more detail on some of the leaves just to give interest. Also thinking there might be a little bit of a shadow cast on some of the lower parts of the leaves being cast by the stem. Okay, at this point I'm pretty much done with the painting. I decide I want to add some spatter to it, so I mix up a bluish green and um, then just splatter with one brush, tapping it against the handle of another. Kind of pick up any place I spatter onto the, I don't really want to spatter onto the tulip leaves themselves, so I clean some of that up. Then I even go back with a wet brush and kind of, I'll pick up some of the spatters that are too, too intense or maybe even blur them a bit. I'm ready to then sign my painting you always got to sign your painting, so uh, usually lower right corner for me, but wherever. I always uh, try to find a color that's somewhat close to the color where I'm signing so that my signature doesn't really stand out too much. I want it to blend in. So if you're done with your painting, go ahead and sign it. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this painting of two red tulips. Um, took a different approach this time. I ended up painting the background first instead of last. And really there's no right way to do that. Um, sometimes I do paint first with a real light wash and then build up my colors as I go along. I wanted to retain a real light background here, which would contrast really well with the darkness of the red tulips. We talked a lot about glazing. Uh, there was a lot of just painting real light transparent color washes and then let it dry and then paint another one on top of that. Um, I encourage you when you paint, um, you know, you don't give up. You may be at a point in your painting where you just don't like it, you don't think it looks very good. Uh, keep working with it. A lot of times I've had that feeling, but um, 
I just kept going with it. And eventually I really, something emerged out of the painting that I really liked. So again, thank you for joining me for this uh, painting process, uh, this watercolor lesson. I've got another one next week, Wednesday at 10 o'clock. I hope you can join us. If you have ideas on what you'd like me to paint, uh, message me and uh, we'll see what we can do. Have a great week.